Welcome to Leadcast. Let's go. Intriguing. Immediately. He's Without delay. Hello and welcome to episode 371 of the Leadcast podcast. I'm your host, Nick P. King Cooper. Joining me, Aiden Frost Rock Arts. Yo, what's good? And Colton Blue Basket Sweat. Hello. Yo. Uh, so before we get into our weeks, we got uh, a little bit of, of uh, stuff to cover. We got patch 9.7, a new way to get prestige points, Tri- Twitch Prime loot, uh, a spicy champion spotlight, or champions spotlight, I should say, a uh, roundtable question, new cheese pick, and uh, Malphite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just looking at that. And uh, a Malphite. It's so, uh, pretty cheesy. Aiden, how's your week? Tell me about your cheesy week. Um, spoiler: Colton and I played ranked, and we played Sona Tark bottom a bunch. Whoa! Yeah, we did. Well, and spoilers: that's what the Medikaiser is. And spoilers: that's what Colton's cheese pick was. But then, <laughs> so okay, well, now we don't have any reason to to do the show anymore. Yeah, it's Thanks pretty for listening. Good show, good show. People only listen for the the cheese pick. Hard disagree. <laughs> Um, Aiden knows your week. You finished the like hard part of school, right? Yeah, I have to submit two assignments by Sunday, but like they're both done. Well, one of them I have to like just edit, but the other one's done. So I'm pretty nice. well done everything though, which is good. And this is for your um, like your, I don't know if it's the, the equivalent everywhere, but your bachelor's, right? Yeah, my BBA. Nice. Hell yeah. That's exciting. So that's cool. Yeah. Um. Other than that, though. Kind of boring week, really, because I've just been grind. Like I was my fucking first part of the week finishing my last like two big essays was like rough. I was up to like five two nights in a row like working Ooh. on it, but it's done. That's I thought it was rough. really good. So nice, yeah. That's exciting. Uh, I think that's kind of everything. I played a little bit of Sekiro, uh, and I'm further than Nick now. You know? <laughs> yeah, I I've decided Ooh. that I'm am going to start over, but mm-hmm. that's okay. It. I feel like I am definitely at a disadvantage for approaching it, knowing that it's from software. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I'm alone in that sentiment. But it's okay. I will learn to enjoy it. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Cool. How was your week? Um. Yeah, my week was pretty good. I. Uh, you know, we played some Sonatark bot. I also played a couple just solo queue games on my own. So I'm. I've I've won more ranked games than I've lost this week, so that's cool. Um, played a lot of Risk of Rain too. Fun game, um, real fun with friends. Um, but other than that, I've been playing some FTL because um, yeah, my save got wiped like a couple weeks ago, or I'm not sure when it happened, but I noticed it a couple weeks ago. So I've been kind of grinding that out, uh, trying to re-unlock all the ships and stuff, and get like a, a victory on every ship. Um, but other than that. Um, pretty normal week i mean just like work's been regular nothing else really going on outside of that so how about you nick what are you up to uh pretty much the same old work in school haha <laughs> xd um yeah playing a bunch of risk of rain playing uh some league i think i played one ranked game this week and i won it so that's pretty fun uh, i think swain is still a good champion but i decided to head on over to uh r slash swain mains to see what they had to say, and you'd think that fucking Riot took out Swain, took Swain out old back, and shot him in the back of the head. That's just the same with like every him. game, though. Like no one wants to say that their main is bad. I mean, no one, no one wants to say their main is like the best, right? I okay, so I don't think Swain is the best. Like yeah, he certainly has like pretty glaring weaknesses, but he's playable, like everyone, easily. Like, everyone underrates their main, or sorry. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Like in any game, fighting games or whatever. Like especially, if, I think fighting games is like the biggest one. But mm-hmm. you never well, see someone with... go, my character is the best character in the game. Well, you can't because as soon as you admit that, nerf. I mean, I don't even think it's that. It's like, look at fucking, look at Melee, right? Where you have, like, say Leffen is Fox main. Uh, Armada, say, is a Peach main, even though he plays a lot of Fox. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hungry Box is a Puff main. And even Mango is like a, Fal- a Falco main, right? All of them think that their character is, like, uh, third to fifth. Okay. Like, uh, Hungerbox thinks Pop's fifth. Leffen thinks uh, Fox is third. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Mango thinks Falco is fifth, and Armada thinks Peach is fourth. Or I think I remember was third or fourth. I think it was fourth. Hmm. Yeah. It's like there's well, one of them has to be the best <laughs> yeah. character. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, so I don't know. It's okay. like that in every game, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I, I would. I'm not sure if anyone plays Swain and and is curious to hear other people's thoughts, but I would steer clear of that because that is a mess. Jesus, everyone's just complaining like, "Oh, I miss old Swain. He was way better." Mm-hmm. Like, no, <laughs> old Swain was a dog shit character that was boring as shit to play. Full stop. Period. But hey, what do I know? Um, but yeah, aside from that, we are. Uh, let's get into the patch because that's that's going to be the biggest. Uh, the biggest news this week, but it is it's a pretty small patch, honestly. Um so patch nine point seven is live. Yes, live. Uh Kale is up first. Her armor growth health regen has been decreased. Her Q cost is increased, her W movement speed is decreased, and the mana cost is increased, and her E damage is reduced, but now has a ratio. So yeah, bringing her in line a little bit. I think this is these are like pretty decent changes. It does seem weird that her movement speed gave her like her w gave her 50 percent movement speed that's a lot for two mm-hmm. people it, mm-hmm. it's it's weird how like they released a super hyperscaling late game character and then she had a low win rate so they buffed her mm-hmm. and then i was like hey because even like you were like a little bit on the anti kale train where i'm like ah, i don't know i don't feel like we buffed these characters <laughs> i mean i think like i think once the like the uh, I, I mean i definitely don't think she her late game needed a buff um but i think once people started figuring out that you can just go klepto and skip levels because Mm -hmm. her passive is attached to her ultimate level as opposed to her champion level that then it just kind of like fucking everything's a wash then Mm -hmm. but um yeah quite strong definitely in in need of a nerf so Glad they're bringing her in line. Urgot's also in need of a nerf. Yeah, he is. His passive damage uh, has decreased late. His E cooldown is increased early, and his cost uh, the cost of his E is increased, and his R damage is down. That character is pretty wild. I only think... Like, okay, so obviously he was, he was strong. His interaction with Conqueror, though, is disgusting and should be hotfixed, in, like, immediately. He procs it instantly with five like ticks of his W because they're all classified as auto attacks. There's three autos each, yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 crazy. She, oh, it's disgusting. Azir, small change. Uh, health regen growth has been increased, and Q damage has been increased. So just some some tiny buffs. Yeah, Chogath Q cooldown is decreased to seven seconds. That's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Mundo changes, which I think are really good. Uh, Mundo's Q damage is increased and his E attack damage is increased. I think those are really, really big changes. Yeah, quite quite good. Garen, W passive stats increased, cooldown decreased, and duration time decreased late. Um, so more stats, but less time of actually take no damage. Hmm. It is insane to me that he gets 50 armor and magic resist for free. Is it insane that he's still a shit character with 50 armor and magic? Or no, I mean, mm-hmm. it is, but that's insane. And then when he <laughs> activates it, it's like 40% damage reduction flat. I think it's higher than that. I think it is. It's study. That's crazy, yeah. Oh, well, Leona, her E cooldown is decreased. Pog. Uh, Lissandra, the Q cooldown change went through that we talked about last week, where they're, ch- they're like oh, changing true, it from yeah. 6 to 10, which is fucking gross. Yes. Yeah, that's a pretty big nerf to her early game. Uh, Morgana, health regen growth is down. W ratio also down. So some small nerfs. Yeah, small nerfs to mid lane Morgana. And Pike, Q cooldown is decreased early and his E stun duration is increased. These are pretty, these are more significant than we talked about last week, I think. I, don't, I think, like, they didn't need to buff it. Like, it's, his buff, his E buff is only by, like, 0.15 seconds, but yeah. I don't think they needed to change that. I feel like his Q cooldown, that's a fine change, knocking two seconds off the start. Like, mm-hmm. it just makes him probably feel better. It's not going to, like, increase his win rate that much, I think. Yeah, I don't think so either, but they're, they're definitely, like, kind of weird, if that makes the sense. The stun change is a little bit weird, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Rumble, uh, W movement speed increased, R cooldown decreased. 
Silas, health regen decreased, W damage decreased, E cooldown increased. Even more nerfs, because fuck Silas. I have already mm. seen so many posts about Silas being a dead character. He has the like, lowest unplayable. in the game! <laughs> He's also incredibly hard to utilize effectively. Also, like, the fact that that, that fucking 40% win rate or whatever was on Reddit on the top, like, the front page was mm -hmm. after 12 hours of the patch data. <laughs> maybe after people, like, maybe adapt their build, maybe it will change. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, why did my character's win rate go down after a nerf? You're playing mm -hmm. them the same exact way. Yeah. Uh, items. We have some item changes. Uh, Cinder Hulk is getting a buff to the minion and monster aura damage. Up by um fifty percent, yeah. Yeah, uh Dark Seal I think is a really good change. Ability power and self sell uh sell back value decreased. So you can't just like buy it and fucking get two hundred and forty gold back or whatever ridiculous. Yeah, the the buyback or the sell back so value much. is definitely like part of the, the most broken aspect. Right. It was it was the scaling item that cost you nothing to get, right? Like you just sell it back and you lose a hundred gold on it, but you got those stats for all that time and like bonus healing from your potions. Where, like it, it should actually cost you nothing. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas at least now it's like, oh, if you don't get your stacks, it's not going to be great for you. Anyway, uh, Wit's End has been updated and just pretty much uh, a, a big change. So attack speed, magic resist, and cost are increased. Now grants movement speed. On hit damage is lower early but higher late and no longer steals magic resist, but now it does have a heal. Uh, so it gives 5% movement speed and it heals uh, on hit damage, but it's less effective for range. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of nuts. So I'm excited to see how this will work. Uh, um, burns such as like Cinder Hulk, Bombie Cinder, Sunfire Cape now like give running totals of their damage dealt rather than. Like, oh. 30 30 30 30 whatever <laughs> that's pretty nice yeah uh, and then we talked about this last week but the eyeball collection ghost poro and zombie ward have been uh updated um so you can listen to us talk about that on last week's episode i do think there's one thing that we didn't talk about last week about it was sure is there ever a reason you got go eyeball collection now so mate on aram uh, yeah. i guess obviously yeah but. so aram it's better if you are a skirmishing jungler who doesn't plan on, like, warding a ton, which doesn't sound, like, super great, but if you just plan on fighting, it's probably better. Because you can get... I imagine you can get those stacks faster than you could with Ghost Poro or Zombie Ward. Not that much faster, though. You'd have to get you have to get 10 kill participation to get it on Igawa Collection, whereas... And how many wards do you have to place down? Uh, you have to kill 10 wards or place 10 wards right I yeah believe. probably not that much faster but that that's the that's the only that's the only Wait, reason to take it it's just like the weird like it's not like it should be like five kill participation for eyeball collection because they now they all give the exact same stats right mm -hmm. so you're you're giving yeah. like extra vision to maybe potentially maybe get, get a little bit faster, faster if you snowball hard yeah and when we say get it faster we're talking about get like 20 ad faster or something like it's not like and then you just still don't have the vision for the rest of the game yeah like you you, you, you hit your max stacks and you just don't get the vision bonus for the rest of the game like you get on zombie ward and ghost Poro. Mm -hmm. i think like, that eyeball do something sorry no yeah like I, I think eyeball either needs to be stronger or you need to be able to get it much faster if you're doing well like or just increase like the adaptive force overall so like it's a big bonus when you do get it not just like a small thing Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, like if it was, you know, they all stack up to 20, but when you finish proccing eyeball, it's like another like 10 or 15, like, I don't know. I, I feel like that's, like, if the other ones give, like, vision bonuses, but the same adaptive force, so there needs to be some reason to take eyeball, and because I might get 10 kills and or assists before I stack at the other ones, like, that's not a very good reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, cut yeah. down though another rune. Uh, they're buffing it some more, so it now it skills five to fifteen percent rather than five to twelve. Still bad. Uh, yeah. Uh, demolish max health ratio is increased from thirty percent max health to thirty five percent max health, so just a little bit more damage from tanks. 
People that are whole... acting like it's the end of the world, by the way, with that change. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I definitely, yeah, I definitely thought the same thing. But I, I like I, the logic is it feels like a strong rune right now, right? Which mm-hmm. I think so. It is a strong rune, I think, regardless. But I also think that compared to the other ones, it's something that you see a lot more, right? You see like you see it proc, and you go, "Holy shit! I did that much damage to turret." Whereas like the, what are the other ones in the tree? Um, Shield bash and font of life. Those two are much harder to see their effects in game, I think, which makes demolish immediately feel better, even if it wasn't as good. Those that's also like incredibly niche like picks, right? Anyone can use demolish. Not everyone can use shield bash. Not everyone can use font of life. I think that's a better way of looking at it. Yeah, you're so yeah, you kind of yeah, you kind of default to demolish. And of course, like oh, you're seeing it all the time, and most of the time you're seeing it on pretty beefy tanks. You get that huge max health conversion, and it's doing a lot of damage. But yeah, you're Mm -hmm. not seeing that 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 slow heal over the entire game of font of life or the bonus resistances that you get from shield bash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Overgrowth. Uh, overgrowth. <laughs> you do it. You do it, boy. Uh, overgrowth. The completion bonus grants more max health. So it's better for tanks. Predator. Uh, the monster burn effect of hunter's talisman and its upgrade no longer interrupts predators channel. Okay, so that's just like a, a nice little quality of life thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Ultimate Hunter, they increased it uh, so it stacks up to twenty percent instead of fifteen now. Cool. So they they were saying it's it's bad. Do you guys I mean, do you guys think Ultimate Hunter's bad? It's bad in comparison to the other two, right? Is the main thing. The movement speed one is by far still the best in the tree. I think it's just really? the movement speed is like it's the most valuable resource in the game. I think. Hmm. Because I find myself choosing between Ravenous and Ultimate Hunter almost every game. If I, I go that, I think you're not valuing the movement speed though. Like, I like yeah, how you I, said I, other I two. Don't Aiden. Think I am. I like how you said other two, and there are four runes on that tree. Oh, what's the what's the new one? That, uh, what's that? No, there's one? movement it's, speed. It's the igneous one. Yeah, there's yeah, movement speed, active, active item cooldown, uh, healing on abilities, and ultimate cooldown. Mm-hmm. What? What are you talking yeah. about? What the active item cooldown one? I don't. I don't think I've ever taken that. You get like forty-five percent active item cooldown reduction. Ingenious oh, hunter gosh. gain fifteen percent active item CDR <laughs> plus an additional five per bounty stack includes trinkets. Which actually the includes trinkets part is nutty because you can have your red trinket up way like all the time. Anyway, I do think that in general, relentless hunter is probably the best. I think Ultimate Hunter, this is going to make it more in line. I think the biggest issue with it is, like, Kudu, or sorry, not Kudu, Presence of Mind is, like, almost always better. Like, and the fact that it's, like, Relentless Hunter is going to get you things sooner. Um, like, you're going to get strength from it a lot earlier than you will from Ultimate Hunter, Like, having, you know, okay, you get, like, an early gank off, and you get, you know, plus 8 movement speed. Maybe you get, like, a double kabai, you've got plus 16 movement speed. You can use that a lot more, I think, on most characters than, oh, I'll have, you know, 10 seconds off my ultimate from Ultimate Hunter. I think that's the biggest reason my Relentless is so good. That being said, certain characters abuse the shit out of Ravenous Hunter, so Mm -hmm. that's a thing I think, honestly, should just be removed. I think there are plenty of other ways to get healing in the game and that having like that, that basically a death stance passive on just a basic rune, like it's too strong on certain characters and too shitty on a lot of others where I think if they got rid of that entirely and maybe took a look at ingenious hunter and maybe a little stronger, that could be a bit of more balanced, like three runes. Plus I don't know why that's the only row of four. That's the only roll four in the entire fucking rune set. Well, they moved something into that, I feel like. No, they added the ultimate hunter after. That's what they Mm. did. Um, I mean, I think they're all, like, pretty decent, honestly. I still... I guess, like, I don't play characters that have, like, a ton of active items. Like, active items that you use consistently, I guess. Well, yeah. So, like, it's super, super good if you go, like, I don't know, lock it... Mikhail's redemption like you can get I believe you can get around a 45 second redemption 
like cooldown, which is insane. That and I think in general the biggest like strength of it is Predator plus Ingenious Hunter, mm -hmm. like because then your Predator cooldown is often right. Like that's part of why that Predator uh, Ingenious Hunter into Redemption Rush Olaf was so good is because like not only is it effective but like he's just gonna have it up all the time. Um, but I mean, I think that Predator plus Ingenious Hunter is like one of the biggest combinations of like why you might take that. Cool. You want to talk about ARAM changes? Because I think most of them are bad. I mean, we could. What's going on in ARAM? Let's see. Scroll, scroll. So, scroll. Uh, they added bands. Cool. That's a good thing. Bands are probably fun as long as they don't take a long time. I haven't tried them yet. As long as they don't like add to the fucking Q time, like the champion select time by that much, then whatever, it's fine. Um, they made it so minion waves spawn um, faster after 15 minutes, which I think is cool, and they deal more damage after 15 minutes, so it kind of makes the games more consistently end at like 20 ish to 25 minutes. Whereas, like, occasionally you'll have that weird like 40 minute game, which will fuck you. Um, this is where we get to the changes I don't like. Uh, they added a thing where if if you get damaged by a champion that's over 900 uh, units away, the damage is reduced by 15%. So it's like a p anti poke thing. What a fucking band aid solution to that. Mm -hmm. Um, just fucking like at this point now we have bands, ban poke characters if you don't want to get poke or dodge. What, oh, fuck. Do you remember when the changes first went on the PVE neck and that was like like screenshotted the post and it was like. There's no good way to deal with poke on the map other than dodging. And I had just screenshot, like, blown up, like, 500% uh, dodging. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck, that is the solution. Just dodge the fucking ability. It's part of the game. Um, they also added a new summoner spell, which replaces barrier. It's called backtrack. Uh, so it gives you, like, a little tiny barrier shield. It's, like, maybe, like, one-fourth of a barrier shield. And then it teleports you back after three seconds. So you activate it, you get a shield, and then it teleports you back a little bit. It's less of a distance than, um, uh, what do you want to say? For, for range characters. So, like, range characters don't use it that well, but melees do. Which I think is a really, really cool rune. It's kind of like Yeah, it those... sounds really awesome. What was the item they had? Oh, the uh, lethality uh, item with, like, the sword thing. Uh, ghost... No, sep... Uh... You know what I mean, though. The, yeah. It was like a green sword. It kind of looked like Yomu's in a way, but it wasn't. It, the, um, the name of that skill was Backtrack. <laughs> um, and then they added... Sorry, they... Um, Mariners, Vengeance, and Ghostwalkers have been added to the store. So it's added back those items that were uh, in the old Butcher's Bridge when they changed it. And then they changed Warmogs. Wait. And Warmog's armor has been adjusted. Oh, yeah, what did they do to Warmog's? It doesn't say here. I can't remember what they did. Fuck. It does not say there. Oh, they huh. I, I don't remember what they did. Shit. I really don't Probably nerfed did. its region out of combat because it's fucked on ARAM. I mean, probably not, to be honest. I just yeah. don't remember what they did. I remember, like, reading about it. I don't think it was a bad change. Um, and, like, a lot of people who, like, main ARAMs think Warmog's is bad, by the way. Like, it's a bad item? It's not a good item. Like it's not open yeah, I don't know if we should trust the opinion of people who play ARAM exclusively. <laughs> That's what I was kind of thinking, but... Um, Is that toxic? No, I feel you. Anyways, uh, I can't <laughs> find the change to that. And then, obviously, it's now on Butcher's Bridge for like this event. And I, I'm assuming they're just like doing all these changes. They're going to test them, and if any of them are good, they're going to keep them. And if any of them are bad, they're going to get rid of them. Hopefully, they'll get rid of the fucking 900 range thing, because I think it's actually one of the worst changes I've seen in this game. Yeah. It's not terribly fun. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, that being said, like, there you go. You. I was just gonna like just wrap it up by just saying like there's bug fixes, Mac client updates, uh, your shop returns starting tomorrow, and then upcoming skins. Yeah. Uh, Dunk Master Ivern shouldn't be released because I don't like it. And you get rid of that. It skin. doesn't fit the continuity of the Dunk Master universe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ivern already has a silly skin. He should have a dark skin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's Dunkmaster, Ivern, and Hextech J4. Uh, I think they both look pretty good. Yeah, the the chromas for the Dunkmaster Ivern look so good. Yeah, they look sick. I don't know if I don't know how I feel about Hextech Jarvan. Now that I, no. uh, 
think about it. So it looks really fucking cool in game, but it looks a little bit similar to his, uh, is it his Dark Star skin? Dark Star, yeah. Like, I think it looks better than Dark Star, but like, similar. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So that's it for the patch. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. They're reworking prestige points? Is that a thing? How's that working? So, so currently the way there's a thing called prestige points in the game is when you get 100 prestige points you can get a prestige skin which are in the store and they last a year currently there's um kda what's the, re i think and then yep. B- blood moon atrox and then the fur day fizz or whatever right those are the three that are currently 100 points in the store and they last until one year after they're added so what they're doing is during every event now uh the event passes will uh award you 25 points so by purchasing four events like over a year or whatever, you'll be able to get one of these skins, which I just think is a really, really good way of doing it, honestly. Yeah, they also mentioned that um, there would be specific missions where you could acquire points uh, at a faster rate than event points, and you could get like a max of 25 throughout the year, I believe just for free, mm-hmm. which is uh, which is really nice. Yeah, it's just like a cool like little thing, and they also mm-hmm. made it so that you can buy like prestige points like during these events. Like you can buy like a bundle, which will probably cost like fifty dollars or something like that. It'll like have like other shit in it, but that's also kind of like a way to like not have to spend four events getting your points, even if you're like a whale in the game, right? Mm-hmm. You can just buy it because I want that skin, which I think is once again a good thing, even though it still costs a shitload of money. Yeah, faux show. And yeah. lastly in news, they've got Twitch Prime loot is out. So if you have Twitch Prime, uh, make sure to link it to your League of Legends account and claim that. You just get a free capsule. So free stuff's always good. Aiden, hey, what you claim got? Yours. Oh, I, uh, I got the grave skin that I fucking got rid of 18, 18 times like from buying chests. <laughs> every, I get, every single time I buy like chest, I get this like three times, and I re-roll it always, hmm. and I finally just gave it to me. They like want Which, me to have the skin. What skin is it? It's the shit one that they released a while ago. What's it called? Um, oh, oh, the um, the one with course. fiddlesticks, Praetorian. Yeah, yeah it's fucking. It's, it's one awful. of the worst skins in the game. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm glad I I'm glad I got it for like quote unquote free, but <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. The only thing I like about that skin or that skin line is the fiddlesticks Q sound, which yeah. sounds like uh. It it's it, he makes the sound that R two D two makes when he gets shot, like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's great. That's but that's good. it. That's the only redeeming thing. Yeah, the greatest one looks better than the fiddle one at least. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. so there was one more story that I wanted to mention. So it's a pretty funny story uh, that happened this week. So I don't play some characters like a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> One of those characters is Rek'Sai. So I saw, <laughs> I saw a build this week in ELCS. I don't think you played the character go... very much. So the last time I played Rek'Sai, I uh, was in an ARAM tournament <laughs> where I played her as an AP sniper. And in that game, I learned that her AP ratios were nerfed like three years ago. So that kind of shows like mm-hmm. how little I play the character overall. Anyways, <laughs> so. I obviously don't play the character. Saw the build in EU LCS. It's pretty well go jungle item into crit with hail blade. So like when you queue an attack and stuff, you get a lot of crits. You do a lot of damage. Looks like a lot of fun. Looks pretty easy to play. Um, so fast forward to actually playing the character. So play the game. Feed really hard. Like one in eight. Nick somehow lo- died even harder. Uh, he went like one in 14 or something. I'm like, okay, I'm not very good at the character. A couple days later, uh, watching NALCS, and I see someone play Rek'Sai, and they do a combo, and then at the end of the combo, they bite someone, and I go, oh, I don't think I used my <laughs> E once that entire game, rather than a tunnel, at least. I think I tunnel a lot. So I go through the VOD, didn't use the E once the entire Big game. Roof. That's that insane nuts. to me. Like, it's actually, like, some iron level stuff. Honestly, bronze know that. Bronze players know that every character has a need. <laughs> it's actually wild. Like I, my world just crumbled <laughs> around me when I like saw that. 
Like, that's actually insane. I don't think I've ever done that where I just haven't remembered to use an ability. Ugh. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah. I can only imagine. Do you want to move on to Metakaiser? Where we're going to... Yeah, talk about we're going to talk about Sona plus Tariq. So you guys have played it uh, more than I have because I've played it zero times. So why don't you let me know all about it? Hell yeah. So I'm looking, we're currently uh, four wins, one loss on this pick. Three of those wins were in uh, diamond ranked. So three, three and one in ranked with it. Um, so the strat is uh, you basically go Frostmancy, Sona, AD carry with Tarek support. And you get tons of gold on Sona, just like auto attack poking and Q poking with uh, Frost Fang and Klepto. And then once you've fully procced your Frost Fang and you don't get the penalty anymore, you can start last hitting. Um, Tarek is going to be CSing with his Relic Shield up until that point. But you just have crazy sustain um, with this lane. Really good poke. And, like, your team fighting is nutty. I think that's the strongest thing about it, honestly, is, like, when you get to team fights, it's just like, oh, your team has movement speed, healing, damage amp, armor, more healing, stuns? Wait, more stuns. Also, invulnerable. Like, you just have so, so, so much utility. If you have any character that can actually, like, benefit from a support, you just destroy team fights. Yeah. It kind of sums up the idea that you're abusing the whole early landing phase. The reason why it's good is because you can abuse the way that support items work. Tarx yes for the first part, then Sona like pokes all day, and it's kind of crazy. Like she has insane poke. She can proc her uh, spell thieves, and then Targon can proc his uh, Targons. Since she upgrades her thing, then she can start last hitting. So then you have gold overall because they both get to use uh, support items. Support items are like really yeah, they're super the cost meta. effective. So having access to two of them is just yeah, like and like by the end of the game you'll have gained like three thousand gold between your frost fang and your klepto. It's nutty. Um, so yeah, in terms of like, there's a video out there that we kind of copied it from, but like in terms of build on the Sona, you go uh, obviously you start the gold item and you just like rush tier, uh, finish off your seraphs, and then go lich main. It's kind of like your first couple items. From there, you can do stuff like a Death Cap, uh, Dark Seal if you're doing really well in lane. Um, and then I think Hourglass is a pretty good way to finish off a lot of times because you're still super squishy no matter what you do on Sona. Um, and again, you're going Klepto primary. Secondary, you go the Defense Tree for Revitalize so you can have bigger heals. Um, so yeah, that's that's Tarek Sona. Yeah. I guess I can explain Tarek really quick. So you take Guardian on him. We had a discussion on what you take out of the first part, first part of the resolve tree. We decided all settled on demolish. Uh, I think there's an argument for taking shield bash and an argument for taking font of life, uh, but I don't think you proc stuns enough. I don't think you uh, trade enough. So demolish is kind of just better overall because kind of you can proc it whenever. Revitalize and the other one, uh, another healing one. I go down inspiration picking up boots and biscuits. I think there's some merit to going cosmic insight instead of boots. But boots are pretty crazy on him, I think. Uh, as for his build, um, we start with the Targon's item. You upgrade it as soon as you can. I like going into Frozen Heart and the Knight's Vow. Frozen Heart if they're like full AD, whereas Knight's Vow, um, more if they have like more mixed damage. Um, they go Catalyst in their build, which I think is like a waste of gold. Um, and then you kind of go into like other basic support items, like upgrade your Targon's fully to the support item. Uh, you can pick up stuff like ZZ Raw. You can pick up just health, armor, magic resist, whatever late game. You can pick up uh, redemption, stuff like that. Kind of whatever you want. Any utility, really. I feel like it's a lot of fun overall, though. It's pretty strong at all points during the game. Uh, if you're going to play it in ranked, then you probably want to ban characters like Draven, Morgana, Pike, um, Callista. Pike. I was banning Pike every game. Because mm-hmm. Sona is yeah. just crazy squishy. Like, if you're against people that can all in you, you have to play really smart. Otherwise, they'll just hundred to zero you instantly. Mm-hmm. So, as a Tarek cool. player, I think there is merit to going um, presence of mind as your secondary. 
and you can kind of not build as much mana. You get that cooldown on your ulti too. However, yeah, I th- biscuits are fucking yeah, wild. Inspiration though. is absolutely insane right now. A lot of it is that you being a double heal lane, so you can out sustain anyone really. Mm-hmm. Poke and then just sustain is insane. As long as they don't all in you, you're fine. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I just think there is also an argument to be made for presence of mine on Tarek. Especially with a, a Sona in the lane. But you guys are the ones that have won with this. So. Yeah. I'll d- defer to your judgment. Um, Let's get into the round table. Cool. I have that right here. So last week's question was, what is a mistake that you consistently make but fail to correct? Austin said, I think I miss every cannon creep. DC said, don't get greedy and risk your lead. Can I steal some? I'm just going to note one other thing about this lane. Um, if you're going to play, just jumping back, Austin's comment reminded me of it. Tarek and Sona, neither of them are very good at last hitting or wave clear. Uh, so you got to have good mechanics to be able to actually have gold. Because uh, neither of them are very good at wave clear or last hitting. So like, you're going to miss a lot of CS if you don't know how. That's all. PSA announcement over. Yeah. Um, Brian said, having faith in that weird pick. I do that fairly often. They picked some dumb mid laner, and then I go, oh, we can win. And then uh, guess what? We don't. So <laughs> it's just like it happens so often. I just like surprise <laughs> Pikachu. Devin said, I hold my flash too late. Mike says, uh, warding our jungle with no other one on the minimap usually ends up with me dying. Fried Waffle Sloth from our Discord says, logging on. And Magic Man said, I always sacrifice myself for my teammates and then they should turn around and fight to so turn around and try to fight so mm-hmm. both of us die. I feel like I do that a lot. I try to suicide, then we both fight and we both die. It's so dumb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, I'll do that all the time, too, because I'm playing a lot of times, like, engage tanks or supports, and it's just like, I'm going to go in so that everyone else can live. Oh, no, they all went in, too. I guess we're getting aced. Yeah. Um, so this week's roundtable question is, you wake up in bed beside the last character you played. What's the story? Hmm. Oh, boy. Let me uh go back. I wake up in bed next to Sona. Hell, yeah. <laughs> um what's the story i don't know man that's that's interesting because she doesn't talk so i guess i must have been very persuasive or charming um hmm. uh fortunately i dodged the bullet uh it's lux um so probably like i don't know diplomatic you know uh diplomatic attempts <laughs> but uh fortunately the game Ambassador before that Nick. the game before that um elise so <laughs> quite uh quite fortunate yeah that uh, would have been bad <laughs> how about you Aiden? um so mine's tarek because i've been playing Ooh. him um so did you see the ring that he bought me <laughs> have you seen those gems <laughs> yeah yeah if you want to tell us who you're going to wake up beside, uh, hit us up on our Facebook page at Leadcast, send us an email, mail at leadcastpodcast.com, or come into our Discord and post in our end table section. Wait, no, oh, I came yeah. up I came up with a better answer for mine. It's like an actual answer. All right, so it's DJ Sona, right? And I'm like, I'm up in the club just like dancing all night because she keeps crescendoing everyone. And like, I'm just the last one alive. And she's like, I choose you. Well, she wouldn't say that, though. No, but also, like she just... has a pretty long cooldown, so yeah, that doesn't make sense. Kind of yeah, but no, so thing. she's got presence of mind, and every time she casts it, right, like regular people only have like ten HP, so it kills like thirty people every time, mm. and she just gets it back up. Mm. I'm not sure I'm buying it. Mm. That's fine. <laughs> no, that's actually pretty good. It's got like a one minute cooldown, <laughs> right? So she just got she just has to wait for like the song to get like the big bass drop or whatever, and then that's when she blows it. So everyone's dancing. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> Nice. Where can they send their, their answers? I just did that, Nick. Thanks for listening. Yeah, yeah, but can you say it again? No. Okay. No. Okay. 
We're running out of time. We don't have enough budget to go more than uh, 45 minutes <laughs> on the show. Uh, it takes us to cheese We're pick. running All out right. of hard drive space. Speaking uh, of budget. Cheese pick. Yeah, All right. So I saw a video. So <laughs> no, no. I, I'm actually changing it because I... Someone linked me this video. I think it was uh, Dylan or like I am D three ski or whatever. Um, but it's like an attack speed on hit zillion, hmm. and it's just like so being able to ninety nine percent move speed yourself like constantly on an eighty carry and then res yourself if you die is pretty funny. Um, I don't think it's probably like the best thing, but I do think it looked really really fun in the video he sent me. Um, so that's, that's what it is. I mean, you're going to go like pretty stand around itself with like a rage blade. Um, and I think it was a blade of the Ruin King. I think you could afford if you wanted to, to go like kind of an AP hybrid with like a Nasher's tooth and the rage blade and then get like AP. But either way, you just get a bunch of attack speed and, and do big damage with all of your little clocks that you're throwing at them. So that's the cheese pick. All right. Not bad. You don't nice. believe that. It's like it's like one of those things, Nick. So I like, I watched it. He is, in theory, one of the better characters that could get to that point. But that's sure. like a build that every single every, you could do that on any single character in the game, right? And eventually <laughs> yeah. becomes like really really good. Mm -hmm. But he does mm -hmm. utilize it, I guess, slightly better than some characters. It is like a lot of fun to watch. And it's really funny to watch all those clocks flying through the air. Oh yeah. It's also like the guy who was playing it in the video isn't very mechanically skilled either. Like, he wasn't, huh. like, microing or anything. So, you could definitely play it even better than how he played it. Hell yeah. That's awesome, then. Um, Let's jump into Mailfight. We got three emails. The first is from Blake, and he's uh, giving us an update. He said, hello, host. Seems like every email of my mentions that I haven't emailed in ages, blah, 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 but it really has been. Uh, I haven't been playing a lot of League recently with work and school, just leaving me with no time. And even when I do t uh, get time, League's just not interesting to me at the moment maybe it was the holiday grind that burned me out it is by far my most played game with like 3600 hours uh his next closest being gta with 100 or something hours he loves the game and loves the memories that he's had with it but uh and the podcast but he needs a break from it he will give it a month to see if he likes it again and that will, will probably uh give him the distance he needs he doesn't know how many people have reached a point where um they need a break this season, but uh, a lot of people who have just gotten tired after playing for years, farewell for now, good friends. It's been a good year for the podcast. From your friendly neighborhood, Sniperman and the best quiz master in the New Zealand land, Blake. Well, sorry to hear that you uh, that you feel burnt out. I um, I don't know why, but I don't know if I've ever felt quite burnt out on League. I mean, certainly after like extended sessions, I'd feel burned out, but I never... I think tired of league as a whole yeah i think we've always like all of us have felt like i'm really burnt out from ranked plenty of times but like mm -hmm. i think the hey we can always play like an aram with our friends and that'll always be fun like that kind of stuff or, like we can always just yeah play, like, for sure and have a good time um and i think that's sure. that's part of it that really helps is like having a group of people you can like always play with but mm -hmm. uh i hope to Definitely. see you again soon blake and thanks for the email yeah thanks blake Next email is from Dustin. It says, Hi guys, I was writing to get your thoughts on the two videos Freak has put out recently on base stats and League. They are a little long, totaling around an hour between the two of them, but well thought out and very interesting. The gist of what he's proposing is to trying uh, sorry, is trying to increase clarity in the game by normalizing base stats across roles and character types. For examples, all melee bruisers would have the same base armor, MR, armor growth, and MR growth. This would be the case for all archetypes, such as all pure tanks, all melee juggernauts, all ranged mages, AD carry, etc., etc. The difference would then lie in health and health regeneration and items. The reason why this is better is because you can see HP in their segmented HP bar, you can see items at the glance when you hit tab, you can see health regeneration as their HP bar ticks up. What you can't see is that Oriana has 68 base armor at level 18, but Anivia has 89. Uh, this normalization of base stats would give you a better idea of how to play around roles and archetypes instead of having to know obscure knowledge on 140 different champs. What do you guys think, Dustin? So I think that would have uh, been a really, really good thing if they had started with it. 
But I think it would break so much to try and do it now. Like, that's one of those things where, like, if there was a League of Legends 2, that's how it should work. Mm -hmm. I think implementing it now would be way too hard to actually to do it right. Um, I mean, I don't think it would be, like, too impactful, honestly. Uh, there is a way to look at base armor on a champion, but it's certainly not intuitive and easy to do quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I think like the only, my only argument against this is first of all, you don't really have to know those numbers. Like, cause how are you going to translate 68 base armor to, okay, how much of my damage, like how much damage am I dealing to them? You know, no, I almost guarantee that no one has those breakpoints in their head. It, they're not perfect, right? They're like, oh, he's got about 100 armor, so I'm going to do about feelings, a quarter yeah. of my health, right? Yeah. And then it's just like, oh, you get your ability, and you're like, okay, maybe that did like 20%, and now I just know for the next time I hit my Q, it's going to do about 20%, right? Like, you observe, and you just get used to the feel of those, and I, yeah, I agree with you that knowing those exact numbers doesn't really change much. I think there's some things you should know, though, like relative like differences. Like, for example... Talon has very, very high base MR for hit, for being an assassin, right? Whereas, like, other assassins might have much lower MR, right? So, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're playing a melee cast, or, like, a mage caster, right, and that, like, you do AP, um, if he's, if you start against him, you're gonna, you're gonna know he has, like, 40, I think he has 40 magic resist level 1. So, he has the potential of picking up both magic resist runes and being up to 50 MR, and he could even buy null magic mental level 1 and have 75 MR level one right and that's something you have to account for you know that talon has is a high mr mage but like i don't think you actually have to know that he has 75 has the potential of being up to 75 right i don't think mm -hmm. that's really ma matters but it's just like just understanding characters and what they are is important it's in general yeah and i think that falls more into the like the uh the clarity that he was referring to where you look at ramus you're gonna imagine he has more armor than uh, like a, a Mundo, for instance, mm -hmm. right? Even though they they share the same class as a tank, that they kind of fulfill different roles as an MR tank versus an, an armor tank. Um, I think like what I what I was trying to say was that my I, my only argument is that by making things more uniform, you allow for more opportunity to break from the norm, and I am not personally a fan of that. Like, if there are specific rules in league. And a character comes out that can break that rule. It's generally seen as not a very fun mechanic. Yeah. For instance, Yasuo's double crit. For instance, Akali's you know t true stealth under turrets. Things that you know you kind of establish rules in the game and then break them for specific characters that don't feel that doesn't feel super great. Um, but yeah, thanks, Dustin. Our last email is from B Brian, and he said, So I decided to change from playing long-range sie long siege mages and start playing something different. He picked up Nico, and he's having a blast. Two questions about her that he would like to ask. One, he's getting really fed every game, top levels of farm and plenty of kills, but not translating uh, in it into wins. Would you go over what you would see as win conditions for Nico? Uh, feels like he's not maximizing her use of W. Uh, and would like to know your thoughts on the our thoughts on the ability currently using it to check bushes and block skill shots and then he linked a description uh, but it's essentially you know you shoot out a clone of yourself that runs in a direction in your stealth for uh, for a tiny bit hmm. um, so I think like the best way to use that ability yeah it's kind of checking bushes blocking skill shots but also utilizing the stealth to get into situate like to, to positions that your enemy wouldn't expect because you kind of play as this trickster burst mage um and you and you want to use that unpredictably yeah if that makes it sounds sense. like he's playing her like mid ap i'm assuming right mm -hmm. yeah because uh, yeah. i do think playing her like when she was like 80 i think i still feel like she's playable ad um mm -hmm. but i feel like you use the w completely differently there i feel like you just yeah. use the w directly at them or like at any point it's just like gives you a set window of stealth just so you can get closer as an AD ca caster. But I feel like you can't do that as a mage. No, I think you have to use it almost more as, as an offensive tool as a mage versus like a defensive tool as, a, as an AD carry. Mm -hmm. um, but I think like, honestly, I think one of Nico's biggest win conditions is actually like baiting 
teams to go in on you via your passive, which sounds like pretty niche and weird that a character would play like that. But there have been so many games where I've been playing against a Nico, not even considering that this low health vein could be a Nico, that everyone puts themselves in a in a bad position, gets rooted, gets ulted, game's over. Like at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like, and I think the, that's like her most obvious win condition. Yeah, I think the main benefit of that character in general is like even if it's not like, like uh, I, I like you know what I mean. It's not like you're ever gonna like. If they have like time to think about it, you're not gonna ever fool anyone with Nico. It's like not that crazy. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm I'm this character that's dead on the map. They're not they're gonna go, oh, that character's dead. It's not it's, that's Nico, right? But it's the idea of like just making them think for like an extra like half second or like a full second. That's what really matters, right? You're all you just want to like delay their reaction by like any amount, and that gives you like a slight advantage. You're never gonna like completely just like own someone mentally. If they're in the same ELO bracket yeah. as you, but yeah, like, for Col- sure. Colton and I a couple days ago we had a Nico flash over the wall or something as a Mo- I think it was a Mumu or Evelyn or something like that, which the character was dead, but both of us went, oh shit, that character is low HP. Even though like, immediately I'm sure both of us like went, oh shit, that character's dead, but it was like enough of a time that we didn't walk away, but instead of walked forward, that it mm-hmm. we died, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those, like, you're playing mind games, but they're not, like, you're not, like, trying to get in their head totally. It's just that split second of, like, okay, we win the game if this is vain. It's almost worth committing to this. And then it turns out it's not, and you you, you wipe them with your uh, insane scaling ulti. Uh, aside from that, I mean, honestly, team fighting picks... General uh, general strats like that really work well with Nico. Um, she kind of plays a lot in team fights like a Lissandra, like a much burstier, squishier Lissandra, where you want to position yourself to get into the back line to get your ulti off and then hopefully not die before the team fight's done. Kind of like a higher risk, higher reward Lissandra. Um, but yeah, unless we have anything else to, to mention, I think that's uh, that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, hopefully that helps Brian. You'll have to give us an update, and that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for listening. If you like us, you can follow us on Twitter at Leadcast and at Leadcast Frost. Facebook is Leadcast. Teamspeak is where we hang out most of the time. You can talk to us Teamspeak dot No password. You can send us emails mail at leadcastpodcast Follow us on Twitch Twitch TV slash Blue Basket and slash King Lardout. And finally, support us on Patreon Patreon dot com slash Leadcast. Thank you all for listening, and we will see you next week for episode 372. Bye. Bye. Bye.